Welcome back to Weekend Live. Now it is time to analyse the week's news with Ebony Bennett from the Australia Institute and Emily Dye from the Australian Taxpayers Alliance. Ebony and Emily, let's get straight into it. Lots to chat about. First, we start with the caps on international arrivals. Uh, as part of National Cabinet, state leaders agreed to increase the number of Australians able to arrive home, although at a slower pace than the Prime Minister had asked for. Ebony, do you think that states should accept more returning travellers, given that there are around 24,000 Aussies still stranded overseas? Yeah, look, I think this will be welcome news for all of those tens of thousands of Australians trapped overseas and hopefully uh, as Victoria's uh, situation improves, the states can contemplate lifting those numbers uh, again to get everyone home as soon as possible. But what you hear is what those Australians are returning to. At the moment, the government's planning to send Australia off a, about a 40 to $60 billion fiscal cliff in the December quarter when it reduces the job seeker and job uh, keeper payments. Uh, and that's going to be disastrous. It'll prolong the recession. It'll deepen the recession. And ultimately, the, the bad news for all Australians, not just the ones who are able to return home. Emily, it's a staggered approach, particularly for Western Australia and Queensland, to get these Aussies back home. Is it enough, do you think, or should states increase the caps? I think that we really need to make it a priority to get these Australians back home. Uh, we need to care about all Australian lives, not just the ones on domestic soil. And we need to get those people back to their homes, back to their families. I know it's very hard for people being away from their families in these very trying and very scary times. So it should be one of our top priorities to get people back into the country, back with their families, and back where they produce and help our economy by consuming and by taking back their jobs and getting back to work. Yeah, and hopefully before Christmas too. That's certainly what the Prime Minister is aiming for. Now let's move on. Uh, there's been a bit of controversy in Queensland. Um, Hollywood star Tom Hanks and his entourage are believed to be isolating in a lavish Gold Coast hinterland estate. Now the Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk has responded to those claims today. Let's take a listen to what she said. Now Scott Morrison flew up here a few months ago and talked about more incentives to get more movies here. So I'm not going to cop this uh, negativity on one hand um, about, uh, about the, the industry which is supporting local Gold Coast jobs. Ebony, we've got thousands of ordinary people entering Queensland from COVID hotspots. They're locked up in small quarantine hotel rooms. Should Tom Hanks be given the lavish treatment? Look, I think we have seen exceptions made for a bunch of people, whether that's in Western Australia. And ultimately, I think we do need consistency here. But if you know, a big Hollywood celebrity uh, quarantining in a mansion is the biggest of Queensland and Australia's problems, then we're doing pretty well. But in actual fact, you know, if Anastasia Palaszczuk and Tom Hanks are making this movie and getting it done along with Baz Luhrmann, then Tom Hanks and Anastasia Palaszczuk are probably doing more to keep the Australian arts and entertainment industry afloat than the federal government has achieved in the past six months. As of last month, I don't think a single dollar of the $250 million rescue package for the arts sector had been spent by the federal government. So I do take Anastasia Palaszczuk's point there that she's not going to cop criticism uh, for supporting an industry that is so jobs intensive. The arts and entertainment sector in Australia employs more people than the mining sector. It's critical that we don't allow it to flounder. And, you know, I think really uh, these quarantine issues are the least of the problems that we need to be worried about. Well, you'd hope this movie, when it does come out, it gets good ratings because it's certainly been talked about quite a lot in uh, recent weeks. Uh, Emily, do you agree with the comments from the Queensland Premier that it's bringing jobs into the state? Is that a good enough excuse here? Um, I don't think it's a good enough excuse for being unfair and treating one person uh, better than other people. But rather than taking away privileges from Tom Hanks, I think that we should be extending those same privileges to Australians across the board. I think that Australians have really proven time and time again that they are willing to do the right thing. Uh, tens of thousands of Australians are going and getting tested voluntarily for COVID-19. And I can tell you it's not a very pleasant test, and yet these people are still doing it. People are wearing masks even when they're not required to wear masks. Uh, people are social distancing and staying safe. So I think that it's a real testament to the Australian people so rather than being afraid and really infringing on our freedoms, putting people in basically uh, solitary confinement for two weeks, uh, we should be extending those same privileges to all Australians.
Yeah, well, it's been interesting seeing the backlash uh, to it today in particular. Um, let's move on now to the unemployment rate. Of course, for August, it was at 6.8% compared to 7.5% in July. Ebony, do you think, does it demonstrate that there's more confidence in the economy, particularly in places that aren't locked down? Uh, look, it's hard to say. I think obviously those unemployment figures were much better than expected, but I think most economists agree, agree that those figures are still particularly weak. Uh, I think all but a few thousand of those jobs were self-employed uh, and it's unclear at the moment, you know, uh, how much this is actually in, an indication of a, of a strong recovery. So uh, obviously the figure being lower than expected is very welcome, but we're going to need something much more big, uh, much in the federal budget that it's about to hand down next month in terms of creating jobs. Uh, if we're going to see that unemployment rate continue to fall, uh, the government really has to step up here. We don't, haven't seen any kind of large scale jobs plan to meet the scale of the problem that this recession is posing for the Australian economy. And, uh, you know, it's a couple of weeks out from the budget and we still don't really have much hint of any details of a large scale jobs plan. So that's one of the key things that we need to be looking at. But of course, these unemployment figures are welcome, but the government needs to be doing much, much more. It's got to have much more spending uh, and much more smarter programs to get people in employment. For example, we've still got 100,000 people waiting for uh, aged care home packages. Uh, you know, that's something that the government could uh, quite easily fix if it set its mind to it. Yeah, and I guess it will be interesting to see as well what changing rate to the job seeker and job keeper payments might make uh, to that figure in particular. Given that, Emily, do you think that the latest unemployment figures should be taken with a grain of salt at this point? I'm, I'm delighted to see that the figures are so much better than we were expecting. Um, I think that uh, Ebony is right, uh, that we need to really make some changes and the government needs to step up, but I don't think that that needs to be necessarily more spending. I think we need to look at where those jobs are coming from, and as Ebony pointed out, a lot of that is sole traders, a lot of it is contractors. Uh, we have a lot of people in the gig economy that are bolstering these unemployment numbers. And I think that makes us need to look, we need to look at the gig economy and be like, what are they doing right? And I think that there's a lot of flexibility that people are taking advantage of in those jobs uh, because they're sole traders. They're not paying that high payroll tax. So we should drop our payroll tax and really not punish people for hiring and make getting people back into jobs and really sells our top priority. Well, I guess uh, hopefully more details will be released in the upcoming federal budget. Unfortunately, that is all we have time for. Ebony Bennett and Emily Dye joining me for today's panel. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on now to the rest of the day's news. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson is spending the weekend considering how to best tackle a second wave of coronavirus infections rolling onto British.